So um, the, the object is now approaching its closest point to Earth. What do you see as the threat? Oh, I don't see a threat. Uh, I think it's most likely a natural object, but I do believe that we need to monitor it and verify that it doesn't release any objects that come close to planets, uh, just to be sure that it's not a black swan event. Uh, uh, the reason I was considering this possibility is because it came in the plane of the planets around the sun within five degrees, also has uh, an unusually large size and mass relative to the previous interstellar objects. And uh, it sheds uh, nickel with very little iron. That's a feature of industrially produced nickel alloys. And it shows an anti-tail uh, and a jet pointing towards the sun. That was true since the beginning, since July, when it was discovered. And it's still true now with the latest Hubble image and the most recent um, amateur uh, images uh, that were obtained in recent days. So unusual characteristics and an improbable trajectory, you would say, and that gives you that pause for thought that maybe this might not be a natural object. Yeah, I think it's the responsibility of scientists to consider that possibility, um, unlike uh, th their practice uh, under normal circumstances, because we have a visitor to our backyard and the visitor might show up at our front door. That means we need to monitor it to make sure it's a street cat that is not very dangerous. Uh, when there are implications to society, we must consider even an unlikely event and co uh, collect as much data as possible to convince us otherwise. So in your worst case scenario, what is the threat at the end of this week? Oh, uh, alien technology is a potential threat because when you go on a blind date of interstellar proportions, you never know whether you have a friendly visitor uh, as your dating partner, or it may be also a serial killer. And the only way to find out is to observe the other side. That's my advice to people who go on blind dates. So you feel that this could be part of an alien invasion? Uh, not an invasion. I don't think we are that important. The human species came to exist only on the past uh, few million years, which is uh, just one part in a thousand of uh, the age of the solar system, not to speak about the age of the uh, universe, which is 13.8 billion years. And so we are not that significant. We tend to think, first we thought that we are at the center of the universe. Now we still think that if there will be a visit, it will be about us. But it may be about the most massive planet in the solar system, Jupiter, for example, or it may be for a completely different reason that has nothing to do with us. Uh, I think we should forget about uh, the idea that, you know, there is a cosmic party going on. We are arriving late to that party and uh, nobody would ask us to dance. Uh, so, so maybe Jupiter that they're interested in, you're saying that they're looking perhaps for a, for a new home, a second home for, for their species or? Well, it's, it's difficult to imagine what they might be after because the journey would take billions of years from one side of the Milky Way galaxy to the other. And over such timescales, the agenda of any intelligent species will be very different than ours. We haven't embarked out of the Oort cloud of the solar system as of yet. Uh, and uh, once we decide to do so, uh, our motivation will be very different than uh, what we do here on Earth because um, we might uh, want to leave a monument that would uh, testify that we existed. Perhaps we might want to uh, have uh, self-replicating probes, uh, just like biological systems that produce things that we would like to establish in distant uh, places. Uh, it's really difficult for me to forecast. I think nature is far more imaginative than script writers in Hollywood. But it's hard to imagine a spaceship going past at whatever it is, uh, well over 100,000 miles an hour, um, that, that it can actually gain any useful information uh, on, on its, as it passes through our solar system. No, I don't think a goal of such a visit would be to gain information because um, if it came from uh, a star that is on the other side of the Milky Way galaxy, uh, it would take uh, tens of thousands of years for the signal to reach them at the speed of light. And so obviously, you know, uh, any such uh, sender would not expect 
to benefit from the information and respond to it in real time. You know, the way to think of it is like sending your kids out of home. Uh, you don't expect them to call you all the time. Every now and then you might get a postcard. Uh, but the main purpose of making those children is so that your DNA will have some longevity so that your ambitions may get fulfilled by the next generation. And so, uh, you know, it's not about relaying information about our whereabouts. They're not spying on us. Uh, I think uh, they have their own objectives if they come to visit us. Why do you think it is that other astronomers have looked at the same information and they are adamant that this is a comet? In the words of, of NASA, it looks like a comet, it behaves like a comet, it is a comet. You just look at uh, artificial intelligence systems and you realize that they're as good as their training data set. And so what these uh, experts are talking about is a reflection of their training data set, which is IC rocks. And uh, I'm just begging them to expand their training data set because NASA itself launched equipment to space. So we know it's not all about uh, rocks out there. And um, it's very arrogant of us to assume uh, that Elon Musk is the most accomplished space entrepreneur since the Big Bang. Uh, I think there could have been many more accomplished technological civilizations. Are, you might say these are our siblings in the family of intelligent civilizations out there that they accomplished much more than we did simply because we had only a hundred years of modern science and technology and they may have benefited from millions or billions of years. So for us to say everything in the sky must, must be icy rocks just because uh, these objects shed some dust and gas uh, is really inappropriate. Uh, you, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Uh, this dust and gas could have been collected in a journey through some dense clouds. We don't know how, uh, uh, what, what the nature of the object is until we gather enough information on it. Uh, and uh, we should be open-minded to that possibility because it will potentially bring us to a better place. We might change our priorities. And instead of uh, investing $2.4 trillion worldwide every year on either killing other people or protecting ourselves from others killing us, these are military budgets, we might allocate a fraction of that to space exploration. I can imagine that when alien technology is recognized, uh, we will decide to put a warning system. And that could cost a trillion dollars a year and with that kind of money, we will know much more about our cosmic environment. But from what you're saying, you are 99% sure, more than 99% sure, that this is actually some kind of comet. It's just that small element of doubt which you keep in your mind. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't quantify it at 99. I actually uh, uh, define the scale, a classification scale, which, which is called the... Uh, the lobe scale now in several scientific papers, uh, where a zero means a natural object, a 10 means a technological visitor of potential threat to humanity. Uh, and initially I thought that this object uh, ranks three to four on that scale, uh, but I'm just waiting for the coming data. Uh, and uh, then I will be able to assess uh, more clearly whether it's a zero or a higher number. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have a very small um, uh, uh, sample of interstellar objects from outside the solar system, only three of them. Uh, and uh, it's just like a, a dating experience. You know, uh, there are some people that on their first date decide to marry the dating partner. That's not a good practice uh, to uh, jump into the conclusion that this particular dating partner is exceptional uh, because you don't have a good statistical sample. And so uh, the more interstellar visitors we get to observe, uh, the easier it will be for us to assess whether one of them is an outlier and therefore deserves a lot of attention. Uh, and my hope is that in the coming decade, we'll have many more examples, especially from the Rubin Observatory in Chile that is using a 3.2 gigapixel camera and surveys the southern sky every four nights. We need a copy of that observatory in the northern sky uh, so that we can monitor the entire sky. But once we find the clear evidence uh, for alien technology. And I think that requires the astronomers to be more open-minded because I can give you an example. Uh, on January 2nd, there was a near-Earth uh, asteroid uh, identified and cataloged by the Minor Planet Center. And then uh, within a day, it was realized that this object is moving along the path of 
the Tesla Roadster car that was launched by SpaceX in 2018. And so immediately the astronomers confessed, oh no, this is not a rock, it's a car. And the only reason they knew that is because this object was launched by humans. However, it would be difficult for astronomers to admit that an object is a car and not a, a, a rock if uh, they didn't know in advance the trajectory of that one. Uh, but once we uh, collect enough data uh, and once we are open-minded to collect the data, because if we are not open-minded, we will assume that we know the answer without seeking the evidence to support it. That's really the risk. But once we have beyond, uh, evidence beyond reasonable doubt, we have, for example, high resolution image of the object that doesn't look like a rock. Um, at that point, I think everything will change. Uh, it will affect geopolitics on Earth because citizens will not uh, feel that they are protected by their governments until we put some interceptors uh, in the outskirts of the solar system to basically give us more information about incoming threats. Uh, it will affect, of course, uh, the stock market, the financial markets, um, because our economies will reflect the sense of uncertainty about our future. And uh, it will also affect uh, religious and philosophical beliefs about our place in the universe, because God at that point uh, that is not a parent that has only a single child. OK, so once we realize that we have siblings and by the way, it doesn't take away any of the credit you might want to give to God, especially if God can attend to multiple kids, that makes God uh, far more powerful. Uh, but my point is uh, that uh, some of these siblings that we have in our family might be more accomplished than we are. So we might feel a sense of jealousy. I think uh, many astronomers would agree that there is uh, other life out there in the universe and that it may well be intelligent life. I think where perhaps you become a lone voice or a near lone voice is to, to think that uh, what we're seeing now is potentially an alien battleship when evidence points the other way that this is a natural object. No, well, when you say evidence, when people say uh, it behaves like a comet, what they mean is that we see a cloud of dust and gas around it. Now, imagine seeing a cloud of dust at a distance and claiming that it must be a horse because a horse is a natural object that produces dust when it runs. And then uh, I tell you, no, it's actually a car that made this dust. Just looking at the dust cloud does not tell you anything about the object itself. I mean, obviously, um, experts have their confidence, but but uh, my point about science is as follows. Uh, the foundation of science is the humility to learn. It's not the arrogance of expertise. And what you see very often is experts tell you what something should be and, and demonstrate by that the arrogance of their expertise. They are not willing to learn something new. Well, it, that it comes from a different solar, a different star system with uh, perhaps other different compositions, perhaps. That's what astronomers would say. Isn't there a danger, though, that you're uh, selecting evidence to shape a narrative? And, and that is how conspiracy theories start. It has nothing to do with conspiracy theory because I'm uh, advocating the collection of as much data as possible. Uh, in fact, the, the real risk for science is from experts telling us the answer without checking the answer by empirical data. It reminds me always of the Vatican uh, not willing to look through Galileo's telescope because they knew the answer. And so the risk is really from us not collecting enough data to test our assumptions. So my approach is uh, basically trying to get as much data as possible to educate us because nature's imagination is often uh, more expansive than ours. So finally then, is this an unwanted gift for the holiday season? I don't think so. For me, it's a very wanted uh, gift because, frankly, when I read the news every day, and that's what everyone wants you to do, just, uh, you know, focus uh, on th matters down to earth, I get very depressed. And frankly, one reason that I'm seeking a higher intelligence in outer space is because I don't often find it here on earth.